Have you ever dropped a tool or a fastener way down into the unknown where you can't see it and you didn't hear it come out the bottom trying to figure out how am I going to get that out of here? Check out this cool use of a borescope to do that. Okay, I did not hear it hit the ground, so let's do video. Let's see. First off, if I could see the washer. Oh, there it is. Got it. Dropped it. That never happens, right? Voila! How stinking cool is that? Man, that was cool, but let me show you some other really cool things this thing can do, and I'll show you the quality of the video. We'll do some still shots with the photo, and then just show you how to use it in case you buy this exact model. Let's go. Hey, friend, smash that subscribe button. It really helps us out. Also, we have hundreds of videos and playlists on here for you, and then we started adding uh, timestamps, so a lot of the videos you can jump around and get right to the information you want, and then we even start adding captions so you can pick your language. Enjoy the video. Hey friends, Shane from HowToWrench.com and we made a video last week where we were talking about the Vivor Borescope that we're going to be uh, reviewing today and we got a list of things from customers and the only thing I don't have that people requested, I just don't have in the shop right now, I got a couple of them in storage but nothing we're focused on working on is inside a two-stroke engine. So. We're going to have to come back to that one, but appreciate the request. I'm going to poke around here a little bit as we go around the shop. And one of the things that we are going to do is we're going to look inside the engine, the SNS 145 inch V twin engine, and we're going to look down the uh, piston of that, see what cylinders look like. We're going to look inside a Harley Davidson bagger down an intake port. So we'll see what the camera looks like from an intake perspective on an assembled engine. And then I thought we'd look down this exhaust of the Ducati. We're going to look inside a door panel of my Dodge truck just to see how much it can kind of bend and angle around. It's got a few accessories too. Most of our scorps do now that have the ability to get in at 90 degree angles and capture uh, what's going on. So that's pretty cool. And then the funny thing, I'm going to see if I can find that dang mouse in my toolbox. All right, take off this protective cover. Now, it didn't come with a plastic or, you know, a, a vinyl box, if you will, that had a zipper or something, but it is nice and foam packed here. So the only thing, I don't know, I'm a fan of cases. So a lot of our tools, you know, that come in some type of case that we can grab, but this is easy enough to grab the box itself, but it is nice that it has the foam cutout. You may choose just to take this and then put it in your toolbox if you're not the type of business that doesn't need to take it off site that might be a nice uh, option for you so let's just uh keep that there let's see what all we got we got our ends that we talked about obviously a charge cable and then the camera itself now what i typically do with all my other bore scopes is i don't undo this whole cable because then it's really nice to just get it back in the box. It's a USB-C style connector, so it's non-directional. Alright, see if there's anything super special in here. Just the typical stuff to get familiar with the buttons. We're definitely going to need this page. Okay, charger cable. Let's see, the charger port is number 14 so on the top side let's just look at those all right so let's see what we got we got a slot for an sd card whoa are you kidding me are you kidding me i'm in quite shock right now that this came with an sd card what size is that
12 gigabyte SD card. I'm this is funny. I'm quite shocked there's an SD card in there because, I mean, when's the last time you bought something that came with an SD card? It normally says, you know, this is required. So because there wasn't a ad for this and it's a brand new on the market product, I did not have a way to check out like the specs on what it does and doesn't come with. So that was a super pleasant surprise. But I went home to grab an SD card and I want to make sure I'm going to put some links below if you've ever seen these little holders to store your cards. These are super rad because they hold all the different sizes. If you look underneath here, you can double stack it. So it allows for a ton of uh, card storage and makes it really handy. I'll put a link below to those too. All right, Vivor shocking me here. Let's go ahead here and uh, put that back in. What I noticed on this one is that the uh, pins face up. Okay, all right, what do we got? There is our charge port, USB-C as well. Man, surprise that SD card's in there. Too wild. Okay, here is where, Ooh. we're gonna have to find out what that little button is, let's see. We got number 10 is our wire connection. Let's see, photo video key number one. Okay, that makes sense. Photo video key right there. Then we have lens switch key number two. Lens light adjustment, that is really gonna be handy. Okay, so we have this one. So my other board scopes have had that. And I'll, I'll tell you, that's an absolute necessity to dial in the best video or photo. So you're gonna want that one. Power on off, makes sense in the middle uh, here. Number five is down here, what do we got? Uh, back key, forward key for number six. Where are we at six? Oh, cool. Okay, I see the arrows here. Looks like there's another little indicator underneath there. Let's see. What do we got here? 180. Okay. We'll see what that looks like. Okay. Obviously, the handle. Uh, number nine, the lens, yeah, the back, end of the camera. And then uh, wire connection number 10, we're gonna go at the top. The display, of course, the card slot we already did. Uh, reset key number 13, where do we see that? Oh, there's a reset pin. I thought I noticed that little hole in there. That's cool. See that little hole right there? And then the charging one was right there as well. So, okay, a little quick rundown. Let's go ahead and turn it on. Looks like you need to hold it for a few seconds. Okay, no camera. Oh, this is super cool. I think I know what's going on here so you don't accidentally rip the cable out. This is... See how the cable is special with these slots right there around it? So what do you want to bet that that locks that in there? Yeah, look at that. Can't pull it out to remove it. Okay. Man, that is a nice nice firm connection if you're doing this to where maybe you want to show a customer right from this tool you will want to figure out like looking at your camera you'll make some type of reference or you could put a piece of tape or something on there to to indicate hey so like look at this little you know led light on there okay and let's uh play with that Watch that indicator. As I keep pushing that, I get the little bars that go across it. So it looks like one, two, three, or off. I'm going with the brightest one right now. Off, one, two, three, that's cool. So. Anyway, let's get an orientation of this camera of what 
like straight up and down would be. This is kind of funny how I broke the rule of uh, reading the manual and you think you just know a lot about a tool. Well, in this case, my mind is blown and what I started to teach you is what you normally do is how you need to orientate, get familiar where the camera is. Wait till you see what this thing actually does. This is so cool. Let's see what happens here when you start to play around with some of these features. So let's do, what did we say this one was? Oh, it does reverse? No kidding. I'm just sitting here realizing what that is. That is really, really wild. I need to make some type of label or reference. Oh, I'll use that label maker from before because what I did not realize is there are like three cameras on this thing. This is on both sides. And then it looks to be one down the middle. Yeah, that's super wild that that's doing the roof right now. So now I'm on a behind me. Now I'm gonna go forward in front of me, which is what, wait a second. No, no, no. This is just switching between all the cameras because now I'm off to the side. You gotta be kidding me. That means I'm on this camera. Okay, to the side, I toggle it again. I'm forward, I toggle it again. And I'm, let's see, I'm off to the right, okay? I toggle it again. I'm back to the left. There's three cameras on this thing. And so you can have this down a hole or in somewhere instead of like how I used to have to rotate it around. All my other borescopes I had to take and like twist this. That means I can just plunge this in a hole, start switching between cameras and grab a view. That is going to be wild. Wow. Oh, wait a second here. This is not what I think. Oh, you got to be kidding me. You got to be kidding me. Look at what this is. Remember the arrow buttons? Watch. It's zoom. Okay. Two, four times, six times, eight times. Looks like eight's the max. Wow. What do I, what do I want to bet if I go two? And what happens if I hold it? Shut up. Look at that. If you hold it, it just rotates and flips it for you. Man, this thing is so stinking cool and wild. What was this bottom? I don't remember what the bottom button was. The bottom button, number seven, is setting menu key. Oh, of course. Oh, wow. We can date and timestamp it. So is this touch screen? No. Okay, use the arrow keys. Uh, let's see, date and time. Let's just hit OK. Uh, let's see. So we want to go forward. OK. Then we want, oops, we want April. Sixteenth time. It is... Ooh, I gotta get my butt going. I gotta jump on a plane to fly to Sacramento. Do some training for the week up there. We're gonna call that good. Okay, doesn't look like it has an AM or, oops, didn't wanna do that. Okay, uh, let's see. Clicked out of that. Let's see if it saved it. 324, it did. Hit the uh, settings to get out of it. Date label. Let's see what that one is. That's just checking on and off. Oh, that's cool. So if the date's important to you, maybe you're proving uh, what a cylinder looked like on a certain date before and after you rebuild a motor, that'd be a super rad example. Okay. Let's hit, um, let's hit uh, continue down. LCD screensaver on or off. Let's see. Uh, oh. That's kind of cool. You don't want to run your battery down. So I'm going to leave it off because I'm just going to be intentional. But say you set the tool down, took a phone call or something, that'd be really cool for a business. Okay. So we'll hit OK. Automatic shutdown off. That's pretty cool. Format the SD card. That's always a good idea. I'm going to go ahead and 
Let's see. Let's go ahead and do that. And then default settings, what version it is. Wow. This is uh, pretty super wild. I am ready to go stick it in some cylinders. By the way, I didn't charge this. You could see how much the battery uh, charges on it from how it, how it came to me. Kind of always a good indicator, I find, with a lot of products because it, you know, by the time they sit somewhere and sh get shipped and everything else, you know that thing sat on a shelf for, you know, weeks to a month, right? So it's nice to know the battery just didn't drain down until it, you know, until it got you. This is super cool for accessories. Look at this. It's got a magnet on there, so you could go down in that engine bay and get down there, grab that bolt you dropped, and pick it up. So tell me that isn't going to be super useful. And then, oh, no way. Look at this. Get down in there and hook something and then pull it out. I've never seen that one. Well, I have seen this one. I feel like I haven't taken advantage of it in the past. I'll tell you that. I think I've just grabbed magnets and poked around. That's pretty cool. And then what do we got here? I think where this would be nice is that depending on where you're at, or what you're looking into, it kind of protects those threads from like bumping up against something. But I'm gonna tell you this right now, you better have that on secure so that you don't drop it into whatever you're working with. The other thing is it creates like a little kind of cup around the lens so it might protect the lens a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and use that. Let's jump into the inside of that 145 engine. Under. Make a video there. That is stinking cool. I would say having to play around with the camera angles is a great benefit. It's just going to take some time to kind of look at like, what do I want to see? What am I going to look at? Versus I'm just so used to getting in somewhere and trying to manipulate this all over the place. But what I know about borescopes is your best friend is getting it in there and not like moving it around because it'll get its best focus if you just leave it alone. It's like you get a camera on there and it's always trying to focus on there. If you get the stationary to what you're attempting to look at, that's going to be your best bet on getting the best footage. So, you know, knowing to stop the video and then try other camera angles is going to be really beneficial. All right, let's see. What did we have next on our list? I want to show you something quick because I don't know if it'll show on the recording. Highly unlikely. But if I just, you can see I got a camera indicator up here. So if I just tap that, it's just taking photos of whatever I'm looking at. Okay, so that's a way, like if you didn't want to use up a bunch of space uh, on the SD card, you're like, oh, I just want to grab a quick photo. Boom, you could do that. If you want to make a video, hold and pause that. And you see it switches to the uh, video logo and then starts counting down. And now we're making a video. Make sense? Touch it again. Video's been saved. And it defaults right back to camera. So every time you make a video, it looks like you're going to need to hold that button. All right, let's do it. I wanted to leave this blurry part in for a second to show you how important it is to stabilize the camera if you want really clear video, and especially when you hit the photo button. But this is the cylinder head fins on that 145-inch SNS motor, and just look at the detail on there. That's so wild. I'm playing around with the lighting button to see like what works best and how it changes the uh, output there, and uh, super happy with this. Next, we're going to go down into the cylinder through the spark plug hole, but just kind of look at the threads. I'm using the forward camera on this, and you can actually see the valve starting to peek open there. And then, uh, I'm again, I'm playing with lighting and whatnot, trying to figure out what's best. And just, I can't say it enough. Get it where you want it. Snap a photo. You're going to get the best uh, visibility of what's going on on whatever you're looking at. But here I'm really looking at the seat where the spark plug sits. That's just ANICs. That's no damage. Let's go on in. See the valve just hanging open there. Top of the piston. See the carbon on it. It's a big V-twin with a few thousand miles on it. Nothing shocking. But this is where switching the camera angle is going to be really cool.
I'm going to play around with the lighting and get the best uh, view of the cylinder head. You can even see the valve uh, reliefs there. And then uh, we want to switch the camera view and take a look at the valves on the top of the head. You can even see the thickness of the valve there. If you had a mushroom valve, you'd see it right away. You could see the carbon build up there. And then uh, we're going to focus heavy on, that's a photo of the carbon buildup. And then we'll focus in on the cylinder itself and try to look at the crosshatch. I wish the piston would have been down a little further to get a better view of that, but this still gives us an indication how the tool works. So we'll just kind of focus this around. Once again, I said get really good and steady with the camera, and then you'll be able to take photos like this, and you can clearly see the crosshatch pattern there um, as it's supposed to be. The lighting will throw you off a little bit, but if you've used borescopes enough, you'll know not to focus on the lighting and where you want to point your your view for your photo. All right, I'm going to just start from the outside and show you just the clarity of the uh, print that you can read from this, even when you're not uh, down inside a hole. Here I'm playing with the lighting, just natural ambient versus turning on the LED lights of the camera itself. Even check out how clear this uh, fastener can get. <laughs> Dirty fastener, but pretty cool clarity there. Now we're going to go inside the intake here and you're going to see something really cool. So as we, uh, Spike needs a bath. As we get down in here you can see the casting seams and kind of get the lighting set. But if you notice along the top of the port there you're going to see me focus and you can tell that was most likely the previous intake leak that I fixed. So you can see how where air would come through there mixed with the uh, you know the fuel would bypass around that port right there and cause that that carbon buildup. The rest of the port's pretty clean. A little bit of a theory there, but I think I'm onto something. But that is a uh, super super cool to see. And then next we're going to just focus on the the valve guide, the valve seat itself, and see what that looks like. Really cool and up close. Bike's been sitting a little bit. Has hydraulic lifters, so the valve's closed, which you can see. Do I need to take this apart? Does it have, you know, excessive carbon buildup? And then one thing kind of freaked me out a little bit when I was first looking at this is I thought it looked like there were some cracks uh, right there. You see that? I thought it had a big old crack. And then weirdly enough, it, I think it's just some casting for two reasons. Number one, I'm not having a problem. And number two, there's an identical one right across from it here. You can see I was really staring at that for a bit. There's another indication of that uh, intake leak at one time and I see that other crack but here I just threw it up under the gas tank kind of curious I could see some wires and cables and coils super useful now this would be much more useful than I ever thought because you could jack the bike up so that you could spin the wheel and then actually check the pulley or chain or belt system whatever you got fully all the way around and make sure that you don't see anything. On a Harley in particular that's much more difficult to access so this is just wildly useful. Just doing a couple more shots of uh, the belt itself there but the biggest advantage would be grabbing that view of the pulley in the front and seeing if you had like a rock stuck in there or you had uh, cracks or anything like that or loose. Something else if they don't get those nuts tight they get loose. And then ultimately I'm just having fun then go inside the exhaust here and uh, I guess you could look to see if a baffle was cracked or loose or some weird reason somebody played a prank and stuck something down there. Next I mentioned I had a uh, broken window in my truck and I was just kind of curious before taking a door panel off be worth peeking down and see if there's anything weird like a bad wire or even a regulator's broke or whatnot but check out how cool this is to uh, just poke down there and look around before you take it apart. And then uh, look at this uh, little video here. You can read part numbers off it. I mean, say I wanted to, say I knew it was bad. I figured that out somehow through the switch was good or whatnot. I could take and then now verify a part number without even taking the panel off and just go ahead and you know find one on eBay or whatnot. I think that is just wildly cool to be able to think about uh, not having it just all tore apart. 
here I went up under the dash of my truck and this is where that really long camera cable comes in handy. You can really just kind of start feeding it up, switching camera angles until you get what you need. But you could see just the clarity is awesome. And then when you just find what you want and you stop and you take a photo like this, you can really clearly take a look at what you're uh, trying to see. All right, I told you that I had a mouse and a toolbox. I'm trying to find this bugger. And I just cannot find where they're at. But I thought I'd take the scope and go around and see if some of the mouse traps I put in the back of it have caught it yet. And to be honest with you, I'm not having any luck. I'm finding some fresh poo just nowhere around my traps. But that little nest that he's building there is still showing uh, some evidence he's been coming in and out. I can't find a hole. I don't know how they get into these in such tight spaces. Here I go all the way through the top, which is kind of a cool test of the long cable and its you know, durability. This is where that cover on the camera would be really important. But no luck yet. Hopefully I catch this guy soon. He's really uh, causing some damage. I got a new trap coming. I happened to swing by the shop quick, so I thought I'd just use my camera since my SD card's at home and show you the inside of this gas tank as requested and it's not looking too good pretty bummed out about that but yeah that's uh that's gonna be a heavy treatment to fix but let's say you were buying a bike and you wanted to know oops i guess i don't need to go filming there okay but if you wanted to make that determination storage has not been good on this one let's uh switch camera angles and see what we get wonder how we can switch angles there's another one and then switch again Whew. That is some nasty, nasty fuel. I think I like that first angle, actually. Yeah. So my camera's trying to focus to that, but that's a super clear shot on there. And then you can see the filter come up. And look at the clamps need done and everything, so... All right, my friend, thanks for that suggestion. This is a good application for uh, the bore scope for looking down inside these gas tanks. All right, friends, there you have it. This tool is cool. It has some different features that uh, we haven't uh, used before, especially like the multiple camera angles. I think I still got to get like a little bit more comfortable feel for this handle. And I feel like there's more benefits than I really realized or recognized today. It's got really nice soft rubber grip. It's coated here too. The biggest thing I learned from using this today was to get accurate, good footage so that it's useful is just knowing to shut it off and switch cameras real quick. It's actually, if you've never used a bore scope before, these cables are really stiff. And to try and rotate them around, as you even saw in some of the video footage, it's a little bit difficult to, to get what you want to see. And I think that's a lot of reason people quit is they just aren't getting this like super instant shot of what they're looking at because they're not manipulating it into the right position. And what I learned today, like I said, was this is so cool that I could just stop, not worry about twisting this all around and take advantage of one of the three camera angles and go, oh, hey, that's in the right direction. And then just be moving it more in a straight line pattern and then giving it a little bit of a, a, a side to side flick to get into that different view. Because in reality for a, a, a bore scope, all we really want to capture is a photo. If we're making videos, we're making videos more to show off than it is to like something that's really useful. Because when I get in there and I'm looking at something, I want to find damage on a connector up under the dash, like in the truck example. Or I want to find a cracked weld and an exhaust that's covered by the outside layer of a, a two-shielded pipe or something. If I want to see a bad valve inside an engine, all of those are, are just a still photo. Like, so we want a 1080p still photo of that. That would be our best bet. 
we're just using that camera really to, to get there, capture the photo. And then a lot of times we're not even necessarily caring about taking a photo. Like in the example of the, the washer that was dropped, we're just literally using the live camera feed of that to go, oh, there it is, grab it and go. So lots of uses for these. I would not focus on video. I'd focus on like access to seeing what you want to see and the quality of that image. So that's what we use as kind of like our evaluation process on is this tool something that works? And in our opinion so far here, this works. Um, really shocked, like I said, it came with the SD card, but once again, you could pull that SD card out, use it on your uh, laptop, and then uh, you know send those photos. You could store them. Let's say you uh, rebuild an engine. You obviously have an engine new on day one and you wanted to take a look at, it's usually like a race engine. You go, okay, let's see what it looks like at 50 miles. Okay, we've done an oil change. We've went out and done some hot laps or something. You want to pull a plug, look down in there, and then you wanted to document that. Well, this is what this looked like at 600 miles, 1,000 miles, 10,000 miles, 100,000 miles, whatever the case. You could at least uh, capture that with a dated timestamp and then know what that looks like. So from a, you know, even a, an R&D or a modification standpoint, that'd be a really cool use as well to document like things over time. Uh, typically, I would say that 99% of the people that are using this are looking for something lost, <laughs> like the bolt, right? Or they're debating on a next step. Okay, so if I'm, let's even think of a fuel issue or whatnot. Maybe I wanna get down in and look at like the top of a gas tank and see if it's super rusty, snap a shot of it, tell my customer, hey, no matter how many carb jobs I keep doing on this, you keep plugging fuel filters, your fuel tank is contaminated. Sometimes our customers don't get it without that like extra proof, if you will, like, oh, I didn't even think of the gas tank being all rusty, no wonder. Okay, so maybe you didn't do a bad carb job, things like that, right? So really for the proof side of it, that's where that capture feature is gonna be awesome. If you are making a video too, maybe you're doing something, an application that I'm not thinking about that, you just wanna capture it, so you don't even care where you're holding this or what you're doing. You're just gonna run a camera down along something and then you're gonna go back and pull the SD card and watch it on a bigger computer. Maybe that's a, a, a use case, so. hey. Friends, as soon as I have it, I'll put a link in the description below. They've been great to us as far as getting us uh, discount links for customers and so on as well for fans of the How to Wrench channel. If the moment I have any of that, once again, this is brand new. As I'm making this video on Sunday the 16th, I don't even have a link to purchase it yet. So it's coming. I will get it to you as soon as they're ready. I think what their plan was is to make sure that we like kind of got people excited about it, but they want to make sure they had the inventory in the warehouses. So it's going to be ready as soon as you can click on that. So I hope you appreciate this video. My favorite thing about this video was the magnet and retrieving that fastener. Tell me below uh, what you think. What would you use this for? Do you get any special applications we haven't thought about? Um, super rad. Love having you here. If you haven't done so yet, make sure and subscribe like and and here's the other thing too share this with your friends that would find this a benefit you know you know somebody like oh i know they turn wrenches or i know they're doing something or, oh you remember last month when you dropped that 10 millimeter bolt <laughs> uh this uh might be something to really benefit them as well so share it with your friends i'm gonna get back at it we got a ton of stuff to do actually today i need to jump on a plane and go do some training uh up in the sacramento area and uh, excited to go see some co-workers and uh, make it a great week uh, turning wrenches and teaching everything we know. So as always, my friends, keep wrenching, make it a great day, and we'll see you at the next video.